what is this market carver thing you speak of? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not having fun on this show, try a little harder. I do try to make money as fun as I can. And once upon a time, I even had a cooking show. So think Cleaver, a very large guy. Yes, I broke the rule of finance. I gave away my health to get wealth. And now, like everybody else, I'm trying to invest to get my health back. So far, so good, it's working. But the market carver is our version of what's going on in the crazy equity market and how to divide it up. Do you buy stocks? Do you buy bonds? Do you have cash? What do you do? We show you that on the market carver and you can go to yourlifeafterwork.com Get signed up for that. It's free information. We are more than happy to share it. And it talks about our proprietary proprietary indicator, the risk barometer, and how we use it for you in your financial plan. Again, yourlifeafterwork.com, 800-928-4001. Welcome to your retirement playbook. And this is my retirement tax book, if you will. That's right. You're getting ready to hear about Ed Slot, the IRA group, and things you need to consider about tax planning for your future. The difference between tax deferral and tax delayment, tax free, and waiting to pay the IRS with their rules in the future. Lots of things we need to talk about when I go to the Ed Slot group, myself, Aaron Rayum, the director of financial planning, a few other planners from here in Indiana, but a little over 400 of us around uh, from, the, from the United States get together twice a year. We sit down for three days and we go over, these are just changes, ladies and gentlemen, to the tax code, private letter rulings, things that we need to consider. May 12th and 13th, Uh, Through the 13th, I was in Missouri in Kansas City uh, sitting down with Aaron and Ed Slott and and Jeff Levine and a few other people where we were going over some of the things that were on the tax codes. And they're very, very important. When you look at that filter that that I talk about a lot, the fiduciary focus, if you will, remember the third thing is that annual tax planning, that that's what has to happen on a year-by-year basis Uh, that you look at. And there is a difference between planning and preparation. Tax preparation is what my CPAs do. So I use Huth Thompson up in Lafayette. We've had a longstanding partnership with them, many mutual relationships. Uh, They do all of our corporate accounting. Um, Ben Smith is the president of Step Doctor and Company and Anderson and Muncie. Uh, He does my personal return in terms of their, they do the tax reporting. Having a good CPA is absolutely critical. Tax planning has to be done before the end of the year. And ladies and gentlemen, what I have found is most people don't get around to that tax planning. They do what sounds good today. They do what feels good today, but they don't necessarily do what makes sense for their financial journey. And different people have different perspectives over taxes. Uh, I I will tell you that I had a... uh, when, when we first when we moved to our last house in Anderson, we were there for over 20 years. I live in Anderson, by the way, for those of you who don't know, Anderson, Indiana. And um, we, we, we would have conversations over how this tax stuff worked and who had the best year and who had the worst year. And my next door no- doctor was an oncologist. And uh, I always thought he had the worst job of the world as a, as a cancer surgeon until 2008. And he said, you know what, Joe, I, I think you may have the worst job this year. Uh, getting to talk to people about the Great Recession and, and the things that were going on. And, and everything, people's focus totally in 2008 and 2009, and, and similar to here in 2022, was risk and volatility. The taxes totally went out of the, out, out of the regard. It just don't worry about that. Worry about what's happening in the market. And folks, I will always tell you that you know, it, when a doctor tells you that you have cancer or when I tell you that there's economic problems, Um, The calendar doesn't matter. Uh, Cancer doesn't care about a calendar any more than the market cares about a calendar. Now, there's different periods of time in the year where markets tend to do better. But your taxes are one of those things that's entirely different. It starts January 1st. It ends December 31st every single year. There are very few things you can do up till April 15th, like IRA contributions. But Roth conversions, itemized deductions, charitable gifting, You know, any of those things that you look at, you've got to do before the end of the year. And in my experience, we collaborate with a lot of CPA firms. We don't just cooperate. Cooperate is I tell somebody to do something or they tell me to do it, and we just do it. 
Collaboration is where we have meaningful conversation and discussion going, is this a good idea or not a good idea? And we have those with people every single year. That's what we do with this. It's not all white and, uh, or black and white when it comes to the tax code, especially Secure Act 2.0. Uh, one of the things that you're going to find, and, and there was an article, I, I, it was either in Barron's or the Wall Street Journal, but essentially it asked Ed Slot the question, um, you know, a, a, a particular tax question, and the response was, we don't know, it's unclear, the IRS has not clarified the message, and the, wh whoever the author was reported, if Ed Slot doesn't know, nobody knows, and that's really the truth. Some of this stuff is confusing, some of it you can figure out, some of it you can't. What you can't ever do is pass on tax planning. It has to happen by the end of the year. So my team for the families that we serve always sends out a letter. It comes out sometime in the middle of September and starting October through the end of the year, we do nothing but tax planning meetings. And that, quest that questionnaire is essentially going to ask, has anything changed in your life? We know about your investments. We know about your portfolio. We've got all of that. But is there anything changed in your life? A marriage, a death, a birth, a divorce, an inheritance, a job change? Uh, did you give extra money to a charity this year that you don't normally give? Did you sell a house? Was there a, uh, an, an investment that you had that you sold at a loss or a gain? We're looking for those kind of things. And then, of course, we look for the date changes. Did you reach any of those magical changes that the IRS hits you with? But I've been going over the, re the conversation that, we, that this journalist had with Ed Slot. The New Retirement Savings Time Bomb. It's a book that Ed wrote a few years ago. He's one of the number one fundraisers on PBS and provides that book for people who listen to the show and make a contribution. Uh, but it's a good book. Again, it's called The Retirement Savings Time Bomb. And these were some of the questions that were in it uh, that the author wanted more clarification on. So I thought I would, would go in there and, and hit you with one of the big ones. Here's the question talk about a loaded one. How do we know Congress won't change their minds again in the future? Well, Ed's answer. These days, the number one question people ask me is, can I trust the government to keep their word um, that these, ru the, these will be the rules? My answer, of course not. Fact is, Congress can change the rules again anytime. There's an old saying in ta accounting, the tax code is written in pencil. And boy, is that the truth. I will tell you that all tax code is social policy, meaning that when they write the tax code, the politicians who are in office are trying to get us to do things. There's a reason you can deduct mortgage interest, but you can't deduct auto interest, for instance. Uh, it's all tax policy is social policy, but it's all based on the people that are in there at the time. Remember when we say something sunsets, that means that the Congress has to vote to keep it in, and when it's permanent, it means they have to vote to change it. So the current tax code that we're in today is sunsetting at the end of 2025. It's not permanent, meaning they would have to vote to keep it in. So given the uncertainty, this is back to Ed, given the uncertainty, it's important to keep in mind which direction tax rates are headed so you can plan accordingly. Ed's words, not mine, hint, not down. Now, this is where it really becomes confusing. And this is that academic part of me from the seven years that I taught at Purdue. I told my students, you know, forget two sides of your mouth. I talk out of three. Um, I talk out of the academic side. I was a professor at Purdue University where I taught financial planning for seven years. When you deal with the world of academia, they don't deal with you uniquely. What they deal with is the average and if you look at most of the white papers that are written that I had to study and that even to a degree taught to, they were talking about a median income of people that made $40,000 a year. And I, I think it was 44000 And that's a joint household. Ladies and gentlemen, there are very few of you that have a joint income of $44,000, unless you're already retired, who are taking the time to listen to this program. You are unique. You're not average. So a lot of the stuff that we talk about academically and that you see in white papers papers and journalists report on probably doesn't apply to you. The second side is I am a certified financial planner. I have been for over 25 years. And so figuring out and talking about what we say in the financial planning world is a little bit different. That escalates it a little bit, but it's still not your unique journey until I can sit you down in the office and have a meaningful conversation about your unique situation. The third point is, or the third side of my mouth is I've done this for 35 years. You know, it's, I'm the Rodney Dangerfield and back to school of, you know, you forgot about this and you forgot about that. Uh, if you haven't seen that movie, it's a great show, by the way, back in the 80s, back to school, Rodney Dangerfield. 
Um, and if you're too young to know that, for, you know, I give. Um, somebody on my team said the other day, who in the world is Rodney Dangerfield? That's just scary. Uh, but anyhow, back to this. The things that I've seen in 35 years are sometimes very, very different than what I know as a CFP and what I know academically because people behave in very, very different areas than the way they're supposed to uh, in, a, in a vacuum. So when you look at tax rates, are they going up or are they going down? I can't get into that argument. A federal judge said it was illegal for us to actually tell you the tax rates are going higher. What I will tell you is academically, they tell people that when you retire, that your tax rates typically go down. My experience, for those of you watching the show, the 35 years that I've done this, for those of you watching or listening to the show, is very rarely does your tax rate actually go down. Now, you don't have to pay Social Security tax anymore, but keep in mind, when you put a dollar into an IRA or into a 401k, you're still paying the FICA and FUTA taxes. You're not deferring that at all. So when you take that money out, you don't have to pay the Social Security tax. You don't have to pay FICA and FUTA when you're taking those withdrawals. You're still subject to the marginal tax rate at that point in time today. So if somebody asks me, are the tax rates going up right now because the tax set sunsets December 31st of 2025, and for most people it's higher, I would say, yes, I will assure you at that amount of income, your tax rate is going to go higher. So now you get into the next Next argument, do you believe your tax rate will be lower when you retire? If you are one of those people who spends a small amount of what you make, you have not put a lot of money in tax deferred planning, uh, like IRAs and 401ks, then it is conceivable that you would be at a lower tax rate when you retire. But the bottom line is most people I know who don't spend all they make put a bunch of money in tax deferred plans because it feels good today and they're not getting they're not paying the taxes on that money today under the hopes that they're going to be able to have a lower tax rate in the future. Well, let's just pretend the tax rate stays static and you continue to put that money inside of that 401k or the IRA or the 403b if you're a teacher or a nurse or in the not for profit world that money still has to come back out. The IRS still gets their pound of flesh, and it's going to be at whatever the tax rates happen to be in the future. So when you have that growth on that money, there is a minimum amount that you have to pull out called a required minimum distribution. That amount of money adds up, and it will steal your retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, in 35 years, I have never seen anything separate somebody from the retirement they deserve like the Internal Revenue Service. The tax code is not your friend, but it is a rule book. We have to use it, understand it today, and make the right decisions for your financial journey.